This was the Odroid project at the end of the last video. All we've done today is we've added a couple of additional struts to the front of the unit to make it slightly more stable. Today is all going to be about thermals. We're using one of the SATA ports to pull off a 12 volt supply for our temperature monitor. This uses one of the SATA cables obtained from Odroid themselves. Complete with a small adapter because our temperature monitor uses a Molex plug. We're going to use this temperature monitor with its small temperature probe to measure the temperature of each of our Odroids. Here you can see the temperature monitor in place with the temperature probe mounted in the heatsink of the lower Odroid. Our ambient temperature is around 24.7 Celsius and we'll let this system stabilise before we start applying a load to it. In order to apply a load to the system, we're going to run a gravity simulation on a large number of stars. This will keep both Odroids significantly busy and should push up the temperatures on the heat sinks. We're now running at real time on the lower Odroid as the temperature starts to climb. At this point, we're not actually running the gravity simulation, we're just connecting remotely to the Odroid to power it up. Now we're running through at 16 times normal speed with our gravity simulation running. As you will see, the temperature starts to climb. And although this is the temperature on the heatsink, we know the temperature of the processor will be higher, but we're using this as a benchmark. So the temperature climbs up to around 37 or 38 centigrade and stabilizes at that point. We've now moved the temperature probe to the upper Odroid. And the temperature showing in it is about one degree lower than the temperature of the lower Odroid. So our cooling fan at the back of the unit is doing the job quite nicely. So all in all, our cooling solution is quite adequate for our Odroids. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.